We all know there's drugs in prison, but do you know like how exactly they get there and what drugs really are highly sought after? Because I didn't. Before I went to prison, I didn't. And I was floored when I found out not only what people actually want, but also when I found out how they get there and the prices people pay and how they light a cigarette and oh my god all this stuff I was like are you freaking kidding me like this is insane so I will do videos on all that stuff one day but today let's talk about what kind of drugs are highly sought after and how they get there let's go YouTube friends and family boy do I have a good one for y'all today okay listen I'm gonna jump right into today's video I am NOT going to go into all the pleasantries and all the doo -doo -doo -doo, whatever and right into it means drugs okay drugs in prison let me start off by saying there are three different types of facilities there is county jail state prison and federal prison all three of those are completely different I was in the county jail and then transferred to a state prison in Florida. The prison was called Lowell Correctional Institution. I was there my entire sentence, so my entire 10 year sentence I did at Lowell. I was moved from the annex to the main unit and back to the annex and back to the main unit, but I stayed at Lowell. Lowell is the roughest, toughest prison in the state of Florida. It's the only one that houses death row inmates and the highest security risk inmates. It also is the biggest female prison in the United States of America, not in Florida, in the United States of America. The biggest female prison is Lowell Correctional Institution in Ocala, Florida, where I did my time. So that is the highest amount of inmates that are housed at that prison, which means more inmates, more drugs, more people, more corruption. So with that being said, my video is going to be strictly about what I saw and experienced while inside of Lowell Correctional Institution here in a Florida State female prison, okay? That's it. So if you are one of the people rowing around in my freaking comments and you want to come on here and say, hey, you know what? You're wrong for doing this. You're dry snitching. You're airing people out. Please be aware. We all can do a quick Google search and find all of this information. So please do not watch this whole video and then get trigger happy with your fingertips and want to be a keyboard bully talking about I'm doing something wrong because honey, nobody made you click the play button, okay? This is your trigger warning for the video. Okay, anyways, for the rest of you that are here that I'm connecting with, let's enter the drug world at Lowell Correctional Institution, okay? Now, first, let me tell y'all something, and I am so freaking serious. When I found out what was the most sought after drugs in prison, I was like, what? Who? Y'all want what? Oh my goodness. Okay, so if you guys are thinking like street drugs or something like that, eh, 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 no ma'am, it's not. You want to know what it is? Freaking cigarettes. Cigarettes, Suboxone, and weed. In that order are the most sought after drugs, right? There's not a test for K2, okay? So that makes that highly sought after because they can't drop a urinalysis on you. Number two, there wasn't a test for Suboxone for a very long time, but there is now. And number three, cigarettes, you know, yeah, they can smell it and everything, but if you're smoking in the bathroom real quick and you throw it out, it's going to be kind of hard to prove that you had it. So the things that you can get away with are the things that are the most sought after, okay? And that's those three things. Now, I have seen and heard of other drugs coming in, heavier things, street drugs, stuff like that, but honestly, nobody really goes after that because you have to walk around all day. You're an officer's line of sight all day. You know, there's a lot of snitches and people that will tell on you, so you really don't want to do something that's going to put you out there because if they drop a test on you and make you do a urinalysis and you come back dirty because you have drugs in your system because somebody told on you or the officer saw you walking funny in one of the lines um yeah you know what i mean you're you're going you're going you're going to confinement for a long time okay now let me remind you guys i've been out of prison for two years things do change okay but they don't change that drastically in two years. Now, I will tell you guys about some changes that have happened since I've been out that I'm aware of. 
but for the most part, this is what it is, okay? Okay, so the mail is a big way that drugs can come in, okay? A lot of times people will put a Suboxone strip, like it's a little film. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it's a little film and it looks exactly like a Listerine strip, okay? So people get clever, man. Suboxone through the mail comes in like this. So it's a little strip. It's like an inch by half an inch and it dissolves. And basically what they do is they will take that strip and put it behind a stamp, put the stamp on the envelope and off it goes to you. Okay. Now officers got hip to this. It was all over the news. And so that, you know, that ended what started happening was we started getting our mail in prison and it was an envelope with the stamp portion ripped off. So the stamp part was completely ripped off and th there was just nothing there but a little empty s square, right? So they would just rip the stamp off, throw it in the trash, boom, you get your mail. So now inmates are like, okay, well, you know, we got to come up with another way. So they started putting the strips, they would cut them in half and they would put them in the envelope where it seals, where you lick it. And they would put like, put it in there in the little seal part, because when the prison gets the mail, it opens it through the top. Like it takes a letter opener and they zip it across the top. So it opens like that. The flap portion is never touched at all by the prison. So if you have drugs hidden in the flap portion, they're going to stay right there because nobody is tampering with that part of the envelope, right? Okay. Now, when that started happening, they started ripping up envelopes. They started, you know, trying to really keep on it. But, you know, stuff got through. So now what started happening is people started to actually spray papers, cards, you know, anything that they were sending, spray it down with THC liquid or, you know, dip it in acid, dip it in whatever drug they wanted to send. They would dip the paper or the card in that drug let it hang and dry and then send it right on to you so if you have like a card and the card half of it is dipped in let's say k2 or let's say some kind of weed spray i'm sorry y'all because i don't know the names like of these things so i probably sound stupid saying weed spray but i hope y'all know what i'm talking about like it's some kind of weed like spray weed right so if they have like spray weed on the card if they do that to half of the card or they dip that in like acid or they dip it in whatever they want to dip it in and they send it to the prison, the inmate's going to take half of that card and then they're going to sell it in pieces. So like half the card might be $300, like one fourth of the card might be $150. So that is another way. Now, what has happened since I've been out of prison to try to combat this war on drugs in prison that's never going to fucking stop, by the way, ever, if you are somebody in the chair, in the boardroom, in the meetings, hear ye all, okay, hear ye all, it's not going to stop. Y'all can please waste your time on trying to figure out how to make the little bottles of shampoo or the bars of soap just a smidge bigger because personally, you're wasting your time on the war on drugs. As long as there's male officers in there and as long as there's female officers in there, there's going to be drugs. Okay. Thank you. Tuning right back in now. So, okay. What has happened since I have been gone and out of prison is that now they are no longer allowing mail in at all, right? Which is total bullshit because I know you're in prison and I know you're like suffering your punishment and this is the consequences of your actions and so on and so forth. I get it, okay? I get it. I'm fine with it. I can vibe with that. I'm here for it. But what I'm not okay with is the fact that maybe the person that you were when you committed that isn't necessarily the same person that you are 10 years later. I know that because it happened to me. If that's the case, and you're somebody like me who had a child while I was incarcerated, by the way, I gave birth 
to my son while I was incarcerated. You can go watch the video if you want. It's the one right before this. It's called I Gave Birth Behind Bars. Um, and so I never got to spend those first years with him. And while I was like, okay, this is part of my punishment, so I'm not going to like dwell on it and be pissed off. He used to send me cards that were colored. He used to send me pictures that he colored in preschool. I didn't get home till he was almost nine. So like those things were very sentimental and meant a lot to me and got me through some tough moments. And for that reason alone, like I think it's really shitty that there's no longer male in the prison. So what happens now is to combat the war on the war on drugs, so they say, um, they have eliminated mail and the mail actually goes to like this central hub and from there it gets scanned and then it gets sent to your email account which is through a prison through secure internet and Wi-Fi. You can't we can't use the internet in there, but it's it's like this mailbox that you have and now your mail goes to that. So that is how you view your mail now. So if your child sends you a picture or a happy Mother's Day card or happy birthday or something, they're going to scan it. They're going to send it to you on your email account. Now, if you don't have money to print it because you can pay 25 cents to print that picture, that card, that whatever, the letter, you can print that for 25 cents. But if you don't have money, you're just out of gas. Like you literally just will not ever have anything tangible from the free world like it's just not gonna happen and <sighs> bullshit but whatever anyways so they have eliminated the mail and therefore now they're war on drugs they think that they have really done something and put a damper or put a little freaking um what's that word a dent damn do y'all see how long it just took me to think of the word dent that is so sad. Oh my God, I need some vitamins. Okay. They think they've put a dent in this whole thing, in this whole system in war on drugs, but baby, I'm here to tell y'all, honey, it's not, it ain't happening. Okay, it ain't happening. So, moving right along from the mail, we're going to go to the next way that is most common, um, and that is through human beings, okay? Now, through human beings means two things. There's two kinds of human beings that an inmate comes in contact with, and that is the people that visit them and the staff that works at the prison. So, obviously, yeah, you can, you know, get your family members to bring it, but you interact more with the staff every day. And if you are a decent human being, you shouldn't be asking your family to bring it anyways, because that's just a real shit thing to do. But whatever, that's a horse of a different color and I don't have a dog in that fight, so whatever. But I will tell you this, if you have somebody, a loved one, a friend, a family, whomever, bring it through visitation. Usually if it comes through visitation, it's going to be a drug. It's not going to be like a soaked piece of paper or anything like that. It's going to be weed. It's going to be suboxone it's going to be cigarettes and usually cigarettes is like the most common now another thing that you can do to get drugs in prison is you can have money snuck in through the visitation and then therefore you can give it to staff members and get them to get you the cigarettes or whatever else right so it's all the same process though whether you're sneaking in money or sneaking in drugs this is how it's coming in okay when family or friends or whomever comes to visit an inmate Usually the inmates, because inmates are just conditioned, our minds are conditioned to watch everything, to know the staff schedule, to know the routine of the staff members, to know when they look happy or down, to know if something's going on with them or not. So we know, okay, this weekend at Visitation, which is called VP, this weekend at VP, it's going to be this crew, okay? This crew is lazy. They don't want to do shit. It's the weekend. They want to sit back and chill, so they're not searching very hard and when you're in there they're not watching very hard okay usually you pick a good weekend where you know the staff is lazy and sorry and by saying that let me just say this it's not even that they're lazy and sorry it's that they're overworked and underpaid by the state they are getting paid shit peanuts to deal with a bunch of assholes because 90% of the freaking inmate population are pure assholes that are trying to manipulate you and get over on something. So you're dealing with assholes all the time, day in and day out, who usually have a motive for whatever they're doing and you have to sit there and try to peep it and be on your toes and it's probably exhausting. And for nine or 10 or $11 an hour, that has to be exhausting, okay? So anyways, 
When you realize that it's a good weekend to be able to sneak in whatever you wanna sneak in, you will tell your loved one who's coming to visit you, number one, cut all of the filters off of the cigarette. The filter is not necessary. It adds extra height, extra weight. It's, it makes it more bulky. So cut all of the filters off of the cigarette, okay? Get them to saran wrap a pack of cigarettes with no filters. It's like the circumference of a banana. And you know, girls can tuck that. Girls can tuck that into their purse. And I don't mean an actual purse. We don't have purses in prison, okay, y'all? Their vanilla or chocolate wafer. Their suitcase. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Wait, that's a W. <laughs> they're, they're this, okay? So, girls can tuck that in there. I mean, if you can push a baby out when you're fully dilated, you can damn sure get something that's the girth of a pickle in there, right? Y'all get out that damn gutter. So, okay. We're all on the same page, right? Okay, I want to make sure. Okay, so to understand why it's easy to sneak things into the prison, first you have to understand what visitors actually go through when they're coming in, okay? Now, like I said, every prison is different, every state is different, but here in Florida at Lowell, this is what happens. You will take your shoes off, you'll take everything out of your pockets, you can't bring purses in, you can't bring anything in. Anything that you bring in has to be in a clear plastic bag. So you literally can only bring in a key a driver's license or identification and $50 is the maximum, okay? Now you can bring that stuff in and you can put it in a clear Ziploc bag and have that, but you can't bring in any sort of carrier or purse or fanny pack or anything like that. So basically the thought is that when you empty out your pockets and empty everything out, that's all you should have. That stuff goes through an x-ray machine, kind of like at the airport. Your shoes also go through the x-ray machine. Now you should have nothing on you but your clothes and you. You walk through a metal detector and it shouldn't go off. And then they take you into a bathroom and even children, they, and then they just like pat you down. Like how police pat you down, or if you've never been patted down, just a standard, regular pat down, okay? Now, once that happens, you go in. Sometimes, um, my loved one said that there was a dog in like 10 years, there was a dog there like three times maybe. If the dog alerts on you, then they will take you and strip search you. But in my 10 year sentence, my loved ones saw a dog maybe three times, okay? So it's not even realistic to think that you're ever gonna go through a strip search because likely you are not, right? So when you go through that process, you go in. Now, most men will bring whatever they're bringing, whether it's the cigarettes or the Suboxone or whatever, because you got to think you can, you know, pack 60, 100 Suboxone that are flat little strips. You can pack that into a little piece of paper, fold it up and seal it, right? Now, everything a guy brings in is going to be either in his butt crack or wrapped around his balls, like up underneath his balls. Because when you get searched and you get patted, they kind of just pat right there up by your thighs. And if it's a really lazy one, my family and loved ones said that they would just be like, okay, go ahead and go. So basically they get in pretty easily. But the inmate is the one that has it a little bit harder because inmates have to go through the naked strip search, the naked squat and cough, the naked bend and cough, checking the ears, checking the hands, checking the hair, all this stuff. So the inmate really is the one that's kind of risking it all and they have to really wait for a good staff member. Now, when I say risking it all, they're already in prison and that doesn't even compare to what could happen to the person bringing the drugs in if they're caught. So no, the person in the free world coming in, they're the ones risking it all. But I'm just saying like, as far as this transaction, it's more likely that the inmate will get caught versus the visitor. And if the inmate gets caught, the visitor is going down, okay? And they're going to prison. You get like a, you get, I think 13 months or so around there um, in prison for bringing in contraband. It's called introduction of contraband to a state facility. That's a serious thing. If anyone asks you to do it, please politely tell them to fuck off and find the nearest cliff, okay? Nobody that loves you should ever be asking you to do something that's going to put you in a predicament that you'll end up right the hell where they are, okay? Um, but anyways, 
Moving right along. So the inmate comes in and three at a time, they get strip searched with all the bells and whistles that I already told y'all about, okay? Then they get dressed and they go into the visitation room. Now they're visiting with their loved one, da 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 da, everything's good, everything's moving right along. And at some point in time, whether you know the person got it out of their balls because they went to the bathroom or whether the person you know just took it off while no one was looking because it's a shitty staff weekend, whatever it is the person that has it on them gets it off they will either put it you know on the table in a chip bag or they'll you know pass it in their hands because you can touch hands across the table the inmate will get it and the inmate will either right there at the table have to shove it in their cookie in their vanilla chocolate wafer or um, they'll try to go to the bathroom and do it like that. But the problem is, depending on the staff, if you ask to go to the bathroom, a lot of times the officer goes in there with you and strip searches you before you go in, like before you pee. So they open the door because the doors in the visitation park that lead to the bathroom, they're locked. So you can't just get up from your visit and go to the bathroom. They're locked for the visitors and for the inmates. So if you want to use the restroom, you have to get an officer. When an officer lets an inmate in the bathroom, they will walk in there with you sometimes and strip search you and then wait for you outside the door. When you go to leave, they'll strip search you again. So it's kind of like uh, just iffy on who's there and if they're doing their job or not, right? So anyways, that is how it gets transferred from one body to another in the VP, okay? Now, if you can get away with it and you leave VP and you're strip searched, because when you leave VP, now you're strip searched again. So you better have that thing way tucked up there so far because in prison, they call it the shelf, right? I guess like past your cervix, I don't know enough about female genitalia and anatomy like to really say what it is that we're talking about, but you can feel it and you know if you're a girl. Or maybe if you're a guy too, if you've been up there, I guess. If you put something up you in your wafer and you kind of like tuck it a little, there's like a threshold, right? It's They called it a shelf in prison. If you can get past that threshold, then you're pretty solid on the coughing and squatting because you can cough and squat and it's still not going to peek through or come out. You're not seeing anything. You're not going to see it. It's not going to fall out. So anyways, you can get it out and you'll go back to the dorm. You'll have somebody help you cough and push and cough and push like you're having a damn baby. And then when you get it out, boom, you know, it's, it's a party for everybody. So that is the visitation and that is how you get it through your loved ones or your parents. or your friends, or whomever is coming to see you, okay? And the other way, which is equally as common, is through staff. You know, inmates kind of groom the staff and kind of like build them up to see how far they can get. And then staff in turn does the same thing, takes advantage of vulnerable women in really broken situations just to get their rocks off, okay? Goes both ways, but you know, like I said before, women in there are conditioned to watch and see everything. I literally remember there was a girl who became friends with the staff member because the staff member was crying one day and she was really nice to her and that lady just needed a friend that day. Come to find out she was crying because her husband left, stole all their money, she didn't know how she was gonna be able to pay the rent next month, you know, and she was crying about her kids and all this stuff. Boom, the girl, the inmate, saw an opportunity right there to introduce, hey, what about like if you bring in a carton of cigarettes for me? Bring them in a couple packs at a time. The asking price for a carton of cigarettes on the compound was $500. So you would pay $500 to a staff member for a $30 or $40 carton of cigarettes because they're not getting like the good high class ones. They're getting like the um, cigarettes are a dollar. What do they call it? Like native? Is it native? Or is it naive? Anyways, whatever those cigarettes are that are a dollar a pack, it's like those that you're getting. Or 305s. Those were like very common. So if you're going to buy a carton of 305s for $50 or $20, whatever it is, because I don't know how much it is, and an inmate is sending your family or you $500 through their family out there in the free world, hell yeah, if you're on some hard times and you're going to pay $9 an hour, you're most likely going to say yes, okay? Staff members, you know, it, it doesn't just start like that usually though. It starts out usually like, hey, can I have a piece of gum? Can you bring me in a chapstick? Can you show me some social media on your cell phone if, you have, if you've snuck one in? Because those aren't even allowed. Like, stuff like that. 
then it'll be like, oh, hey, can you bring me so, like a little bit of this? Like they'll try them like one or two cigarettes. Let me say this. When there's money transactions, what happens is this. The money goes from somebody's family member in the free world. Okay, that's the, the life, our life world. From the free world, somebody will cash up the staff member, the officers, one of their family members or friends. They will cash up them money. So if you've got John who works at the prison and you've got Sarah who's in the prison, Sarah will call her people, her dad, her mom, her sugar daddy, her boyfriend, her sister, her bestie, whoever, and say, hey, cash app. And then she'll be like, oh, John, where do you want this to go? And John will give the cash app of his sister or his girlfriend or his baby mama or his next door neighbor or his best friend, right? And that way it's not his cash app. It can't be traced to him. Now the money will start going to the friend or the baby mama or whoever. Then it'll slowly get into a pack. Now, if you can get a pack, packs usually go for anywhere between $30 and $75, depending on the staff member, okay? Depending on the connection with the inmate, depending on what they got going on. And that's how that will happen. Now, I will say this. Families, friends, those kind of situations, the mail, those types of scenarios will usually get whatever kind of drug or whatever it is that the inmate actually wants and is requesting, okay? But when it comes to staff, it's usually only one of two things, okay? Contraband like makeup in some way or cigarettes. Very rarely is there drugs brought in by staff. If it's anything drug related or drug like, it's 100% of the time cigarettes and that's it. So the officer will do the same thing that the family members does, which is cut off the filter, put it in between their sandwich, like they'll make like a big turkey sub or something. They'll wrap the whole little bundle, that banana girth, you know what I'm talking about? Oops. Okay, so the banana girthed cigarette roll, they will take that, they'll wrap it in saran wrap real tight, they'll put it inside of like a turkey sub, they'll close the sub, let all the cheese and mayo and everything hang out, and no, they do search their lunch boxes because that's all they're allowed to bring in, but no asshole that's your coworker is going to take your turkey sub and actually like pull it apart and open it. Like nobody's going to do that shit, okay? So they see a turkey sub or they see a cup of soup. They're like, okay, that's what it is. Now at the bottom of that cup of soup, they got a tightly saran wrapped and Ziploc bagged freaking pack of cigarettes that they're going to give to an inmate but nobody's going to know that because they're not going to go swimming around in your soup canister okay so if the officer is too scared to bring it in through their lunchbox or something has gone on and they're kind of hot on that right then there's also the balls or you know the vanilla wafer chocolate wafer suitcase whatever you want to call the cookie the cookie okay they you know females can shove it up or males can wrap it around their balls. Males get pat searched and walk through the same machine and that whole process that family and friends do at visitation. Officers also do that when they come to work every day. But when you're doing that day in and day out, like they slack. Okay, let's just be real. So yeah, they put their shoes through the you know machine maybe three times a week. Or maybe they have staff and they're new and they do it every day. I don't know. Staff members know how to get around it just like inmates know how to get around it. They know, oh, this strict person's working today that's going to search the hell out of me. Versus, hey, this person that doesn't give a damn is working today. They're not really going to search me. Staff knows that as well. So what will happen is they will pick a day when basically there is really loose and relaxed staff, okay? Their shoes, their balls or cookie wafers, or their lunch, okay? And that's pretty much how that goes. Now, there's no cigarettes allowed in prison. That was banned back in like, I think 2010. And staff is not allowed to smoke on the prison either, but they do it every single day. So it's nothing for them to like get a cigarette out and just like give it to you if you're trying them and you're trying to see like how far you can get. It's like nothing for them to give you like one cigarette. If you can get one cigarette from them, no, you're in there. Take off, baby girl. About to make some money. So anyways, moving right along. And I'm so sorry, guys. I just want to say this one thing. If you guys hear my son telling my dog to like sit or come or something, um, or you guys hear the TV, it's summer and I'm a mom. So this is my life. And I'm sure that a lot of you understand, but I'd rather have this than be without this. Okay. So just saying mom life, hashtag.
half hashtag yeah that's cute Jen cute okay so that is how it works with staff members now staff members is not exclusive to the officers remember guys there's medical staff there there's like the medical assistants the nurses the people that you know come and do church services and volunteers lord forgive me because i am not saying that the church people are doing that because i don't know that they are okay i'm just saying but I wouldn't be surprised because Lord only knows and literally Lord only knows all the things that go on. Okay. So when inmates, you know, weasel their way in with officers, they can do the same thing with medical staff or with any kind of other staff. They can figure out, are they having a bad day? Are they having money problems? Were they wearing their wedding ring last week? And now this week they're not wearing their wedding ring and they're flirting with people. Hey, you know what? I saw them crying earlier and their lunch is a ramen noodle soup. Are they going through something? Like inmates are conditioned to pay attention to all these things and put two and two together to figure out what's going on in your life so that they can connect with you. And that's it. It's all manipulation and game. Okay. Now we've gone over mail. We've gone over human contact, which is either through visitation with the inmate or through any kind of staff member, you know, and then putting things in the body cavities and all of that. We've gone through that. It's worth mentioning that those are really the only two ways. However, there are some crazy things like drones, okay? There have been drones that have flown around over the prison. We never knew what it was that they dropped. They never told us. Nobody ever got in trouble. But yes, drones do fly over the prison. And if they fly over the prison, the prison will get locked down as soon as a staff member spots it. But hell, by now, they have all these little drones and all this shit. It could be over there just raining little, you know, sprinkles of cigarettes and little bad weed baggies and shit. Like, could you imagine just over the prison? Dee, 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 dee. I, could, I don't know, but I'm sure that like now with technology, it's something crazy. When I was there, they had the big drones. They would fly over the prison and as soon as somebody would spot it, boom, the whole prison would be locked down until they could get it under control and either out of the prison like area, the airfield, or um, they could figure out what the hell was going on. But that has happened, okay? Now also, there are work camps. Work camp is a place where the inmates are housed there and are usually at the end of their sentence or have a very low level of custody and housing which means that most likely they're not a threat to society and if they are let out with society but still in custody to work that they won't actually be you know a danger and they won't jeopardize anybody's life or anything like that so when you see those road crews on the side of the road when you see people at recycling centers working when you see anyone digging ditches or picking up trash those are prison work camp crews now some of them might be county jails but usually it's a prison work camp crew and when you get transferred to a work camp it's much more lenient because you go outside of a gate right now let me say this i have not been to the work camp so i don't know i'm this part i'm only going off of what people said because the work camp and the prison i was in they're right next door to each other and people would come back for getting in trouble from the work camp all the time and tell the stories so i guess like some people work at places where they're going to be there every day for that week let's say or the officer told them that you know either accidentally or purposely i don't know if that's something that inmates are supposed to know but inmates would know a lot of the time where they were going to be for the next week let's say right so they'll call their family at home and say hey um, I'm going to be here, so-and-so, whatever, and, you know, yeah, the phone calls are recorded, and they can hear it, but they have to be listening for that phone call, like, they have to actually look it up, or just be listening to you that day, and if they're not, then it could slide by, or you could say it in code, like, hey, remember that time we went to Chuck E. Cheese, and, you know, Mary Jane was there, the one on, Phillips Highway or something like that so now you're letting the person know like maybe at visitation you'll tell your family member hey I'm going to call you and I'm going to say the name of the street I'm going to say da 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 and they'll give you a rundown of how they're going to tell you what they're whatever they're trying to tell you right and when they give you the rundown of what they're going to tell you and then they call and say it you already know what time it is okay so if they call you and say hey I'm going to be um, at this location tomorrow whatever then that night that family member will go 
drive by that location, look for the ditches that are being dug or whatever is happening, and they will drop a cigarette bomb, which is the pack of cigarettes, a Suboxone package, um, some kind of other drug package, whatever it is, they'll whatever package it is, they'll drop it. Because when those inmates are working out there, the officer is usually like sitting in the van, chilling out. So even if they don't know exactly where it is, they can walk up and down, up and down that area until they find it. There was inmates that used to clean the parking lot outside the prison and they were like a little bit more trusted. They didn't, you know, weren't inmates that got in trouble. And so these particular inmates um, one time had somebody for weeks. This was going on for weeks. There was a trash can. So there would be a McDonald's bag with packs among packs among packs among packs like packs on deck on deck on deck right of cigarettes in this mcdonald's trash bag well because the inmates are actually emptying the trash from the trash cans in the public parking lot because you can drive onto the prison parking lot you might get kicked out but you can drive up to it so you can throw some trash away and an inmate's going to clean that trash can so if you actually put something in that trash can an inmate's going to get it they were doing that for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and months getting packs on deck they bet and let me tell y'all it was a long haul but of course like everything else it came to an end so cigarettes and drugs are a big deal and you got to be really careful when you're dealing with that stuff but you know what i'm saying different folks for different strokes you gotta be fucking kidding me yeah i i can't i don't i can't even talk today okay different strokes for different folks but yeah guys so these are the most common ways to get drugs in prison this is how it happens no matter what the drug is no matter what's going on and with all that being said that pretty much sums up the drug game in the prison system
Now, now the other way, which is even more common, which, and the other way, which is probably just as equally, it's like, it's like, it goes in, and then there's like this other one right here, right? So it's like right here, and then like, if it gets past this, then it's like sealed. Like, you can open it, pull apart, you're just all the bells and whistles. Strip searched. So, inmates, what am I retarded today? Oh my God. So it's very few that, so it's very, now basically whoever brings it in because when inmates, because when family or friends are coming in to the prison, they get searched and they do get strip searched, but guys usually if Oh my God, freaking trifling around. They're not gonna go and strip search. And so you're dealing with assholes that are trying to do something to, oh, I was a little crazy. But anyways, all right, so moving right along. That is how that happens. And if usually they will wrap it around their balls, whatever it is. And usually that's like cigarettes or Suboxone. Um, it's like very rare. By the way, if you haven't seen my video of I Gave Birth in Prison, it's the one right before this. You can watch it. I gave birth to my son while I was incarcerated. I don't know why I just said prison. That was like I said in... In 10 years, it was, well, in a, Nana, okay? I really, I, everybody's mind just went nasty there. I don't give a damn what y'all say. Everybody's mind just went nasty when I said the circumference. Because I was going to say girth, but I decided that it would probably just, everybody would be in the gutter at that point, right? So anyway, they will put that little strip behind a stamp. Now, when they put that little, sh a really common way to get drugs into the prison without really risking being caught physically is through the mail, right? Hear me, hear me. Number one, there's not a test for fake. There's not a test for, there's not a, I am not here to, and I don't even care, like, PSA, sorry, y'all already know I have, like, rabbit hole issues, okay, right back, because when you tap it, that button, but when I say cigarettes and Suboxone, I am going to tell you guys but when I say cigarettes and Suboxone, y'all, let me tell y'all. So let's jump right into today's video, okay? If you enjoyed this video, and I hope some of y'all did, because y'all always say my videos are too damn long, and this one is much shorter. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. It's a free way for you guys to help me out. It doesn't cost you anything to just tap that little button down there. But I'm going to tell y'all something. It helps me out tremendously, okay? I have been commenting back and forth um, with a lot of people. If I don't respond to your comment right away, please bear with me because it's my son's summer vacation, so I'm with him doing a lot of stuff. I also work full time, so it takes me a while, but then when I sit down and go through them, I try to go through like a bundle, right? I don't get that many comments to where I can't answer everybody, but if I don't answer you right away, please know that I will. And if I somehow missed you, please don't feel like I just am one of those uppity people that 
isn't going to respond. I appreciate every single last one of you. I swear it, I do. Every one of you, I appreciate from the bottom of my heart. You guys got me to a thousand and I cannot thank you enough for that. It means the world. I want to do this full time one day and y'all are helping me and thank you and thank you, thank you. Okay, I love you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Okay, love y'all. I literally just got stuck on the wall. I'm not even shitting y'all look. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Love y'all.